right, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Man, what a week. It is awesome. It is so awesome. Let me make sure I'm not on mute. I always do this. It is on mute. So finally, I got it right. I'm going live a little early tonight. It starts at seven, but I wanted to give you a little bit of pregame. Talk about this awesome market, man. How it just went down, 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 down. Kind of you can make a, a song out of it. You know, want to sing with me? I don't want you to sing with me. I wanted to stop going down, down, down. But, uh, you know, they say that the only way you can jump up is by going down. Right. So it's about time we go up. But man, I'm enjoying it down here because because uh, because by the dip, man, it's just beautiful. Everything is on sale. Everything's on sale. <laughs> One problem. <laughs> Funny me. I just have never sold anything. And so I don't have any dry powder. I'm fully deployed. So what do we do in these cases? Well, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to share my screen with you. This is my day, okay? And I will tell you, only three things changed today. Three things. First, let me share with you this. My portfolio. There is my portfolio. It is a snapshot of about probably 30 minutes ago. And uh, yeah, yeah. So I was just traveling up here, just kind of enjoying, you know, life and it was going up. And then, thank you, Elon. And boom, and boom, and boom, and boom, and boom, and boom. Shoot, by the end of today, I don't know if there's a, can it, can it, can it go further down? I guess it can. So that changed. So three things changed today, ladies and gentlemen. My portfolio went from green to really, really red. What's the second thing to change? Well, my underwear. There's the two. My underwear. I had to change them a couple of times today. But then three, the only other thing that changed, and this is just to give you a little bit of perspective, is my fantasies. Yeah. Yeah. I engage in fantasies here and there. You know, look, I'm human. As my portfolio started to go up and 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 up, my fantasies changed. I started going into what if mode. What if it keeps going way up there? Man, at this rate, I'm sitting here looking at yacht.com. I'm thinking, honey, instead of downsizing, what do you think about upsizing? You know, all of that crazy stuff that we do when we start getting greedy, right? Well, my fantasies got gut checked. And so today I'm just back to reality, which is, you know, this is just what happens. And let's just gut check. Let's take a personal inventory and let's just see what we have learned. Well, first of all, uh, shit happens. Maybe that's one. Um, but the only time that you actually lose money, and by the way, the only time you make money is when you buy or sell something, right? So if you sell something in the green, you can take profit. If you sell it in the red, you're taking it in the shorts, okay? But what's important is in crypto, what do I know? I don't know shit, right? But I'm just telling you, my experience is in crypto that the reward for, or I should say the price of those gains that go up, 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 up in a crazy way that you've never realized anywhere else in your life, the price of that is the volatility. It goes down, it goes up, it goes down, it goes up. My prediction, okay? Don't sell a damn thing and your portfolio is going to be cured back to normal and probably higher in three to six months. Maybe it takes that long. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe Maybe it doesn't. Maybe we're in that dreaded bear market. I don't know. I don't think so. I think it has a lot of room to go. 
I think it was orchestrated by some big whales out there. But I just want to let you know that, look, we can change our underwear. Our Blockfolio app can change from green to red. And our fantasies can change. Let's just ratchet them back a little bit. But we're not going to change our portfolio while it's deep in the red. We're just going to hold on for dear life. And we're going to forget about it, man. I don't know about you, but I didn't throw money at this to depend on it over the next couple of years. I mean, seriously, if you're throwing money at this, that you're depending upon a gain so that you can pay rent or your mortgage next month, you know, probably a wrong move. So I just wanted to settle everyone's nerves. I wanted to welcome you to Friday night. I want to let you know that usually Fridays suck in this crypto market. And I want to let you know the weekends kind of suck too, right? So this is going to be a sucky weekend and it could be more volatile on the way down. But guess wait, what? Next Monday, I think it all turns around. But what do I know? Nothing or nothing. Okay, with that little pep talk, I am going to bring in my special guest tonight, my good friend, John J. Singleton. And John, are you there? I see a, I see a foggy mirror. I hope you're, I hope, are you in the shower? I'm here, I'm are here, you? yes. <laughs> hey, hey. John, I, uh, I have to let you know, I spoke with Elizabeth earlier. I was getting ready to go live and I didn't realize that you put an invite out to everybody so in your uh, Telegram chat. So, so surprise. Uh, I have, yeah, that was a surprise. So I have Greg, I see you, uh, you've entered the waiting room. I just want to have a couple of minutes with John first and then we can get started. So John, uh, uh, this, this tonight is, uh, is going to be all about you and it looks like we're going to have lots of guests. So that's good. Um, mm -hmm. And we're, and we're going to talk about, uh, I have your video queued up if you want to, if you want to begin with that. Um, that'll, or, or if we want to let people in and say, hi, uh, you tell me how you'd like to manage it since there's a, a big group. It looks like it's coming in. Yeah, that'd be fine. You can play the video. I also have some more content that I've not discussed before, uh, regarding how to figure out what kind of tax you would have to pay, uh, for the portion of your crypto investment that you're going to use. Okay. So talk about that too. So. Excellent. Excellent. Well, it's 6.53. I've let everybody know that we are going to come on at seven o'clock. So let me real quickly, before we start that, I just want to say hi to some folks in the, in the chat. Uh, Liberty guy off the grid. What's up, Uncle V? Yo. Hey, Liberty guy. Seth is in the house. Hex and Pulse chain. Anyone heard of these two? Yes, I have. And I have some commentary on it. It's urgent to do nothing. Even though I did a show on it, I'm just telling you it's urgent to do nothing. I have a different perspective today. As a matter of fact, you won't find those videos uh, on this channel anymore because I uh, got some additional information. I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm just saying that it put up a little quarter red flag with me. And I think people buy from people they like and trust. And I want you to like me. You know, if you don't, hey, you're prerogative but I sure want you to trust me. So when I go down a path and if I ferret out something that doesn't smell right, I may be wrong on it. I may be wrong, but I'm at least going to share it with you so that uh, you can do your own research. But I have just kind of put a halt on uh, all of that. And uh, uh, it, you know, there's just a lot of research to be done. I'm not saying I won't do uh, 180 on it again, I'm just saying that I'm not going to put uh, my channel. I mean, I only have 2000 subscribers. So when I say I'm not going to put my reputation on the, my, the line, that doesn't mean a lot. But my reputation does mean a lot to me. So, all right. Hey, uh, Liberty Guy. Yes, I have Hex. Uh, welcome to the jungle. Guys, Pulse Change is going to be huge. It could be, guys. Uh, okay. It looks like there. Yo, Uncle V. Sup, people. Uh, I do want to let I do want to just before we let it, everyone in. And uh, I hope they're patient, but I do want to let everyone know that remember Gerald. Well, down below, I have my post office box down there. I thought I'd go old school and if people want to support the channel or just send a, a, a kind note or something, uh, 
my P.O. box is down there. So I get a call today and I had three packages. So one of them is from our good friend, Gerald. You know, Gerald. And this was cool. I don't know what this is, but it is a, a Canadian coin. I don't know which kind of Canadian coin, Canadian dollar or whatever. I'll figure it out. But that's kind of cool. And uh, Gerald and I made up because, uh, you know, we had our peace offering. And this uh, this is the the price of peace, I guess. But I'm really I'm really touched, Gerald. And I thank you a lot. Seriously. Uh, you know, I've done a whole video on you. So, you know, I love you. I got another one, which, you know, Uncle V, I like my cigars. And uh, this is from uh, Neptune Distribution. Wait a minute. That's not Neptune Distribution is the, the people. We'll get to it, people. We still got four minutes. So I'm just doing a little thank you. But this is from uh, Mark Wilkinson. Mark sent me a couple of nice cigars. Man, oh, man. Thank you. Oliva, Oliva, I haven't ever tried them, so I'm looking forward to that. I will, uh, I will dedicate my next cigar walk to you. And then I have one that is so damn cool. Uh, I mean, just so cool. There's a guy. There's a guy. His name is Bill, and Bill took the effort, ingenuity, creativity, to take a shot at an Uncle V logo. This is a pirate, but isn't that kind of cool? I just think that's kind of cool. We're going to modify it a little bit, but that is darn cool. And I just appreciate the initiative. Uh, this guy right here, that's Bill. That's Bill, and he's with some actor. I've seen that actor a hundred times. Um, he's in lots of different movies. And then you'll appreciate this, John. This says, uh, when Bill tries to enlighten the people to the things they're blind to, uh, <laughs> and it's, <laughs> isn't that funny? <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> and then good. the bottom it says, I see old Mr. Conspiracy Theory is at it again. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely love that. Bill, I'm going to frame that. I think it's awesome. And I'm going to reach out to you, Bill, uh, regarding the, logo and just your story and all of that stuff. And, 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 and also you, uh, I'm sorry. And also you sent me a couple of cigars. So I'm grateful. Fuente is my favorite. You sent me that. And there's a, there's a funky little one that is a, is a 10 year anniversary one. Uh, I can't quite read it through the package, but, uh, I will dedicate a cigar walk to you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. You're too kind. All right. John J. Singleton, my good friend. I'm going to start admitting some people into the room and welcome them. I don't know if everyone could hear me, but uh, folks, we're going to see a lot of people. This, These are folks who are part of John J. Singleton's uh, which group, John? Your privacy uh well, it's all the same. It's under the title Ace of Coins on Telegram. Ace so of Coins. everyone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ace of Coins on Telegram. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me let me do this just to get everybody up to up to date. We're just going to watch. It's a six minute video. And actually, before I begin, uh, <laughs> maybe you don't know me. Maybe you do know me. But I will tell you. Uh, I cannot say enough about my guest tonight, John J. Singleton. He is a legend in my mind. He has helped me. Uh, well, he helped me in so many ways, including losing 30 pounds in 30 days. This man <laughs> is a fasting <laughs> dude. He eats every every three days, whether he <laughs> eats you or not. And uh, but but seriously, this guy, this thin and trim, in shape guy used to be a hundred pounds heavier. So, uh, uh, he is, he, he, he really, uh, he was my beacon on that and mm -hmm. row for the, the Thanksgiving holidays through, through Christmas and new years and all of that. That's when I lost all my weight when everybody was gaining and I owe it to John for that. So thank you, John. And above and beyond that, John has just been a, uh, a rock for me, 
Uh, those of you, some of you may know me from my old YouTube days where I had an un the Uncle Odd show. And if you do, then you know that, the, that, that I am in a certain kind of battle. And John has been this uh, voice of reason and experience and just uh, I'm able to run lots of things by him. So uh, when he says something, I listen. And if you go to aceofcoins.com, then you're going to be able to get a little peek into the fact that he has a thing to say, a thing or two to say about taxes. Are we obligated to pay taxes? We're going to learn about that tonight. He has some other content. But before we do, I want to just go ahead and show you the six minute video while we wait for some other guests to come in and I'll let them in uh, as we do this. OK, here we go. Let me hey, just want to go over. Hi, everybody. This is John Jay. Just wanted to go over a, a very brief message regarding this uh, 1040 reporting where you disclose um, crypto purchases. And I just wanted to switch over here. I'm going to do a screen share. And I'm just going to go to the IRS website. And um, yeah. and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about here. All right. Good. OK. So what we're looking at here, okay, this URL is uh, at the bottom of this video. So you can click on it. You can also Google this. I'm sure you'll find it. But um, we're going to look at some of the questions here, uh, questions and answers the IRS has given regarding reporting with cryptos. <clears throat> going back, you can see my cursor here, going back. The, uh, notice from 2014, okay, 2014-21. This is where the IRS defined cryptographic currency as property. So it made it, basically, it made it just like gold. So however you used to treating gold, that's how you should treat cryptographic currency. And then if we scroll down, you'll see, and I've done videos on versions of this information, um, especially publication 544, that's really useful, but <clears throat> you need to understand the terms, okay? Nothing on this is inaccurate, okay? The IRS is correct. Um, what, where you're going to run into problems is the sales pitches that you hear on Forbes and all these other websites and whatnot. So just stick to the facts, okay? I don't have any problem here. There's, there, I'm not challenging anything. I'm just going to share this with you guys. If you look down, you know, it's going to talk about what's virtual currency. Well, the IRS has already solved that question with its publication. It said, we're going to treat it like property. I think Everywhere around the world is treated like property. And then, you know, we could talk about this. I've addressed this many times. We know what that is. Um, will I have a gain or loss when I sell my currency? Yeah, you can. Our strategy has been to avoid that gain, right? Don't create a gain for yourself. Easy enough. But this is what I want to talk about. Question five, and it's nice the IRS gives you the answer. What are we supposed 2020, to 2020, 1040 on the tax form for year 2020? It asks, you know, if you've exchanged, purchased, sold, whatever, coins, virtual currency. It's telling you if I, the question is, if I purchase currency with real money, like dollars, US dollars, and had no other virtual currency transactions during the year, must I answer yes? Okay, it's telling you, the IRS says no. If your only transaction involving virtual currency during 2020 where purchases of virtual currency with real currency, okay, they call that the US dollar real currency, you are not required to answer yes to the form 1040 question. So <clears throat> this is talking about a purchase of virtual currency with dollars from a person who owns virtual currency, not yourself. It does not pertain to using Litecoin to buy Bitcoin because you're not actually buying. There's no purchase and there's no sale because like I've said many times before, the beneficial interests have not changed. You can use dollars to buy coins and say, no, this is what question five is telling us. This comes right from the IRS's website. If you're using coins to buy coins from someone else besides yourself, that is what they want to know. This is what it's telling you right here. So just be aware of that, okay? Now, of course, you can structure this in many ways. 
I mean, you can do these transactions. We do them all the time. So no one can see. I mean, you've done this for years. I mean, I remember my grandfather would come visit us. And then when he'd leave, he would shake my hand and give me a silver dollar. Okay. So no one knows about that transaction, right? Well, this is what human beings do. I'm not saying go out of your way to do transactions like that. And I'm not saying focus your energy on defeating attacks, but just realize that you don't have to create a situation where you have a gain, but understand what language the IRS is using. Understand the principle of beneficial interest. If those do not change, there's no sale and there's no purchase and there's no disposition of an asset. So if I put some coins on, let's say I put some Bitcoin on one of those, um, you know, those copper one ounce coins. Uh, it has a, a private public key on there, right? The, the, the private key is hidden. So if I just deposit some uh, Bitcoin on there and I've got my copper coin that can hold my hand, what I really have is a paper wallet, okay? I can, I can hand that to somebody. In fact, I can hand that some, to someone in Bitcoin and someone can hand me the same type of coin for Litecoin. The IRS would want to know about that, but are they going to find out? No. And isn't this something that's done all the time? I mean, don't you hire a babysitter and then uh, don't send her a W-2? I mean, come on. So, you know, it's up to what you guys want to do, of course. And again, the rule is don't organize all your affairs to simply avoid a tax. Sometimes it makes sense, but gosh, you know, you can miss out on some opportunities and get yourself in trouble. So just realize the language is very strict here. If you're purchasing cryptographic currency that's currently not yours and you're using dollars, that's fine. If you're using coins to purchase the cryptographic currency, that's not yours. If you're using cryptographic currency like Litecoin that you own to buy somebody else's Bitcoin, that's considered uh, an item to be disclosed on your 1040. That alone. This is all we're talking about here. I'm not going to go the other ones because we've already, we already covered this. I just want to do this short video to give you guys this information, okay? All right. All right. Playing. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Thanks. There we go. Let me do this and make sure that I can see people. I think I lost my uh, thing that says to admit people. There we go. All right. Anybody else coming into the room? Let me see. Okay, we're good. Okay, John. So that tees everything up. Uh, why don't you, uh, I mean, the, the, the big question that I have is, well, I'm, a little, I'm a little confused. So basically my interpretation is, I don't need to check that box. If I am funding an exchange with my cryptocurrency, and if I am trading coins, so if I'm going from BTC to a stable coin or uh, I take BTC and I send it to Trade Ogre and I swap for some R, you know, that because I'm trading it within coins and it's just me, I'm not trading it with another physical human being. I, I guess I'm just kind of confused. Why is it that everybody else out there says that you – that's a taxable event. They're being told to say that and they're afraid. They're afraid of the IRS. So they're just going to go and go along with what you're seeing on all the Forbes articles and all these articles. But if you look, go to the IRS's website, you'll see what I just demonstrated. What they're saying is that a purchase of cryptographic currency involves taking cryptographic currency and buying other types of cryptographic currency from a second party. It's not trading in your So give me, give me an example of where it would be a taxable event then. Um, a, rep a reportable, let's just say reportable. If I take a uh, Litecoin and I buy it from another person, let's say it's my friend and I just take my Litecoin and I buy some Bitcoin, I, I trade them. That is considered a purchase. Okay, but what's happening on an exchange? Aren't you basically just, isn't that a facilitated exchange between two people? Yeah, an exchange is, like I just described, is a purchase. But if I'm on the exchange and I have different coins and I trade from coin to coin and they're all my coins in my same portfolio, those none of those constitute a purchase. Okay, so initially, all right, let's war game this out. So I want to get ten thousand dollars of my fiat from my 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 bank to Coinbase, let's say. 
So I go into Coinbase and I buy $10,000 worth of diversified coins, $1,000 in each coin, okay? okay? And then I pull those over into my Exodus wallet, okay? Now, Bitcoin goes skyrockets it up, skyrockets up, and I want to be able to take some profits. So if I exchange that within my Exodus wallet, so let's say it went up by a thousand bucks and I want to take a thousand bucks of profit, and I exchange that for USDT or a stable coin, you're telling me that because I'm trading coins within my own universe, crypto universe, that's not a taxable event. That is correct, but you have a couple of different episodes or let's call it transactions there. The first one is you went from dollars to coins. You bought it from a second party, which is Coinbase. That is not a situation where you would tell the IRS, yes, I purchased cryptos because you purchased from dollars to, to crypto coins. It's only when you purchase from crypto coins to other crypto coins that you didn't own first. Okay, but when, when I'm in my Exodus wallet, I don't own that USDT. I'm exchanging for the USDT. So how is that a taxable event? Okay, do you care about the USDT value when you acquire it or when you go to buy it? Do you care well, about the value? Well, the value is closely tied to the dollar. So if... Does it mean something to you? Would you give it away and not care about it? Would I give it away and not care about it? No, it, no it, it, right, because you it's yours. Your beneficial interests have not changed. Ah, okay. <laughs> so that's how you know what beneficial interests are. If you still care about the thing, you still have it. You still have beneficial interest. And as long as that doesn't change, there's no tax liability. So when does it become non-beneficial interest? <laughs> well, so uh, in, in that case, it. It, huh? You spend it to buy something. Okay, so so let's say my dollars. let's say my ten thousand bag over times ends up becoming um, uh, a million, a hundred thousand bucks. Okay, mm -hmm. now let's make it easy. Ten thousand bucks. Okay, okay. I, I ten x, and let me admit this person in. Uh, t ten x, and I want to uh, buy my wife. A brand new car. <laughs> so I take 50 grand out of it. And uh, and then I take 5,000 of that, get her a used car and take 45 and, and go to the casino. But let's say, that, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> let's say, no, let's say I used all 50 of it and I went and bought a car. So I have used my crypto to get into fiat so that I could go buy a car because these dealerships, thank you, Elon, are now not taking crypto. <laughs> <laughs> They're just manipulating the price, you know. What, what's that? Game. They're just manipulating the price, you know. It's just a game. I know, I know. I, yeah, yeah, I yeah, said yeah. when I first got on, I said only three things changed today. You know, my portfolio went from green <laughs> to red. Okay. <laughs> Second thing that changed was my underwear a couple of times today when I kept looking at my app. And the third thing that changed was my fantasies. You know, before all of this went down, I was fantasizing about which side should I go with the 32 or 34 foot yacht. And then, you know, now I'm back to just saying, hey, you know, I'm happy. I'm deployed. This is a great asset class. It'll turn around, you know, but I didn't sell. One dime, uh, you know, I didn't sell. So I haven't lost anything. So what people don't realize is when you see your portfolio go up, 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 that's what's called an unrealized gain. You only realize that gain when you sell it. Same thing when it goes down, down, down. That's an unrealized loss. It's just a picture on your Blockfolio app, you know, and the price of admission to get into crypto, to be able to get those up, up, up gains is called volatility. And so if you just hodl or us old people might say, hold, just hold on, you know, it's urgent to do nothing, just sit back, then there's going to be a point time. Because I guarantee you, there was a lot of people who bought Bitcoin at 20,000 bucks back in 2017 that then they started sharding their pants when it went down to 3,500, right? 
And how many of those people sold only a few years later to see it kiss $65,000 and say, yeah, I was that guy who got yeah. afraid. I, I call it, I call it, uh, what, what did I call it yesterday on my cigar walk? Basically it's, it's, uh, Fogo fear of going fog, fog toe. <laughs> yeah. It's fog toe fear of going to zero fog toe. And that's kind of where everybody is right now. They're like, oh, my goodness, this is going to go to zero. It is not, guys. This is the whales out there that are manipulating the markets to totally, yeah, yeah. totally screw these highly leveraged traders that just start leveraging their, their, their crypto world because they get greedy. You know, a, a 2x gain in, in two months just isn't good enough. We need to ratchet it up to a 10x gain. And what happens? The whales see that and they'll wreck them. So mm -hmm. anyone watching this is probably a relative newbie to crypto. So my message to you is hold. Don't sell anything. It's an unrealized loss at this point. And it's going to turn around. Uh, I'm going to ask. Uh, I'm going to mute. Uh, if somebody comes in, just if they could stay muted, that would be awesome. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, it's okay, but maybe that's one way to not, you know, to pay taxes is to never make money. Go ahead and sell today. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> you won't pay. Yeah, that's it. Right. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> that's I've, I've, the heard, I've heard that they, they're more interested in the tax. The tax makes the decision for financial management which is just a consumer way to do stuff. You're not going to make any money that way. Look, John, that's why this is so uh, <laughs> enlightening. Because if you take away that fear that if I feel like I'm kind of at the up, you know, let's say Bitcoin is 65,000, 62,000, you know, and I'm like, man, the tree doesn't grow to the sky. <laughs> I think I'm going to exchange right. for a stable coin right here. But in the back of my mind, I'm thinking if I do, my basis on that was 30. So now I'm at 60. So that's that's 30,000. I'm going to have to make sure I budget 25% of that for taxes. And maybe that sways me from making that decision. And then I get wrecked. Whereas what you're telling me is if you make that, and this is not financial advice, everyone, I'm not a tax accountant. I am just, I am just your favorite uncle. That's it. I don't know shit. That's my one liner. And, and, you know, I need, I need a hat. <laughs> this is not financial advice. Why? Because I don't know shit, but I'm trying to figure it out. And we're all trying to figure it out. So, so you're telling me that I need not have that mental debate when I want to exchange for a stable coin because I'm not obligated to pay tax per the IRS's own uh, laws or whatever the hell they call them. I wouldn't, that may be correct, but I'm not, I wouldn't make a decision based upon that presumption. Yes, it may be true, but I wouldn't make a financial decision on that. I would make my decision based upon my anticipated return on capital. I don't care about the taxes. The ta Once I have the gains I want, they're not realized like you explained. Mm -hmm. Then I can decide how I want my tax treatment. I don't need to be concerned about that right now. I just need to make as much money as possible with my original principle. So making as much money as possible with your original principle in the ecosystem, though, yes. right, is right. You're, you're, you're basically saying you go just do you. Don't worry about the tax consequences yet, right. yet, because we have a strategy for that, too, when you want to pull. Right that all of that out of this, the ecosystem, the crypto ecosystem. Right. Do I have that right? Exactly. The tax is the last thing you be, need to be concerned about. Okay. But what happens when uh, the exchanges start sending the IRS, these uh, W9s or. Okay. The exchanges will report to the IRS on a form 1099 K or and, some yeah. version of that. Okay. And that reports exchanges between coins. And because there's no uh, change in beneficial interest, those 1099s can be corrected. Now, I'm not saying that's a, a great thing to have to deal with, but you may have that situation if you're exchanging coin to coin on the exchange. If you want to do that, that's fine. 
I don't recommend it. You can use a, a ledger or you know BitFi or Atomic Wallet. You can go off of the exchange and make those trades or go into some real sophisticated software and make tr uh, trades like a trader would. Okay. I'll, okay. I'll so what, so what you're saying is, is, and I've been saying this from, from day one, since I started knowing a little bit is if you need to get your, your, your fiat money operationalized, you need to get it on an exchange like Coinbase, mm -hmm. Coinbase Pro upgrade to Coinbase base pro people. It's free right, right. and you'll save about 3% fees because they screw the newbie. Just mm -hmm. saying. So once you, once you make your investment in your coins, get them off the exchange. So either onto Exodus, which mm -hmm. is a hot wallet on your computer, mm -hmm. a dedicated computer where you first run Kaspersky to make sure that there's no malicious malware on there that's going to you know steal you blind. Uh, but better, better yet, get it to an offline cold storage wallet like a Trezor T or a Ledger. Um, but... There are ways then outside of the world of exchanges of KYC, know your customer, to where you can exchange your coins, whether it's through what John MetaMask or, uh, and, and, and I don't think MetaMask, that's just a wallet, right? There, there's nobody there that's going to be reporting to the IRS. But right now, there's no KYC that I'm aware of. There's no right. choke point they're using, right? Okay, so, so, so right now, today, you can basically do all of that exchanging uh, invisibly, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, to where the exchanges aren't going to be sending a 1099K or whatever you said it was um, to the IRS. But if you want to keep your coins on an exchange, which is not smart, people, uh, then, then, then uh, and you want to ex exchange the coins back and forth, then you are triggering at least, you know, paperwork that you're going to have to deal with when you uh, file your taxes. Now, you had mentioned that you could get that corrected. What did you mean by? Okay, there's two things. One is I can get it corrected, but and you can too. I mean, when I explain this, you'll you'll understand. But the first thing is there's a threshold of reporting, so you're not going to get a 1099 unless if you sell for dollars on the exchange. That gives a 1099 no matter what the amount is, I believe. Or if you exceed the number of transactions per okay, year. Okay, but, but, but dollars, do you mean USDT? A coin? US dollars, USDT is not US dollars. Oh, okay. Well, how in the hell do you, you mean you would basically just have to with, so they have a dollar? I, I guess I'm. If you sell your coins for US dollars on Coinbase, you will get a 1099. The account holder will get a 1099. Okay, so the newbie question here, because I've been a hodler. So I didn't, and I've never taken money out. So I didn't know that, let's say you have a thousand dollars of Bitcoin. I knew that there was a, there, there was a USDT, a stable coin mm -hmm. that's tied to the dollar, but also in Coinbase, there's just the actual US dollar that you can, you, yeah, can you could sell. Right. Okay. So you're just, okay. And okay. if you go into a stable coin, that is not the same as going into a dollar. That is not a gain. That's not a disposition of assets. You're okay. Getting okay. Dollars, yeah. All right. So when you do that, you are paying an exchange fee, sure, right? Sure. To Coinbase. Mm -hmm. When you sell, are you still paying a, a fee to Coinbase? Like if you have a hundred dollars and you want to con uh, convert it to cash, a hundred dollars cash, is sure. it going to end up being Everything like, a, yeah, yeah, they're always going to have a, a fee on there. Okay. That's what, that's what it is. It's a business. Yeah. So yep. the threshold is 200 transactions whatever those are in one year. Wow. January a to, it's a lot. Yeah. And that's why I don't see too many t uh, 1099Ks or 1099s. Um, th there has to be um, a another condition that's met before you get a 1099 for exchanges or trades between coins. And that is, I believe the, the account value has to exceed $20,000. Okay. It, do it doesn't mean you have $20,000 in the account. It just means that the value of the coins you have has to exceed $20,000 and the trades have to exceed 200 exchanges in that one year. Okay. Wow. So, so you have a little latitude there. If you want to trade on Coinbase, if you're not doing it too frequently, I'll caution you on this though. Uh, someone came to me with a 40,000, he had a $40,000 principal in uh, Coinbase 
and he did many trades. He was trying to, I guess, be a trader or something, and he's okay. new at this. And so yeah. he got a 1099 for $900,000. Yeah. So he, here's how we fixed it. We actually got the IRS to agree that that was wrong. And so I sent him a letter, and they, I don't know if they wrote back or not, but they corrected it. They corrected on the individual master file. What they said was, the conclusion was that the $900,000 1099 was not reportable. So okay. it's, it's as, if, as if it never existed. <laughs> so wow. he just reported his normal 1040 and everything was fine. Okay, okay. So you, have to, you have to ask him though. You have to send him a request for determination letter. You have to request a determination letter. Okay, so right now we're gonna give a little infomercial for you. So if there are people who watch this later and wanna get a hold of you who may have uh, cha changed their underwear for different reasons, <laughs> Uh, because maybe they got a nice letter from the IRS or something that surprised them. How do they reach you, John? Uh, best way is email. And I am slow on email right now. I'm not slow, but I have a lot of email. But um, if you have a little patience, I will answer. It's singletonpress at protonmail.com. Singletonpress at protonmail.com. So somebody in the chat, if they could just write that in, that would be appreciate appreciated. Um, all right, we have uh, Sheena. What if you sell crypto for dollars, actual USD within an exchange account, i.e. Coinbase Pro, but then use those funds to buy other crypto within the same exchange account without ever withdrawing or moving the USD funds out of the exchange account? Since the funds never left custody of the exchange, would that also not be a disposition of assets or is it still considered a disposition and therefore taxable uh, even though you never actually withdrew the funds? Excellent questions, yeah, Shana. Yeah. Very good question. It is considered a disposition of assets and it is reportable and likely taxable. Okay. Now, now there's a, there's a, um, a similar sort of transaction that you, would, you can read about if you want. It's called a 1031 exchange where you sell real estate and you, within a certain period of time, you use the funds from that real estate transaction to buy a like type of real estate. And then that will be a deferred tax situation. This is what you're asking. If you can sell coins for dollars and then within a short period of time buy other coins, there is no such exemption in that situation. So it would be a, a reportable gain. Okay. So really what we're suggesting here, and this is not investment advice, this is not tax advice. But we're just exploring, we're having discussions of possibilities, exploiting the ambiguity of the gray, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. But uh, we, 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 we want to keep the money, the amount we earn. So from what I gather is go deploy your funds, get your coins, pull them off. And then there are ways to be able to exchange coins that aren't on an exchange. Just figure it out. You're smart people. It will figure it out. And then when you do, when you get that little thing at the end of the year that says, did you, what, what does it say, John? What, what, what's the macro, the first question? That <laughs> if you say no to, you don't have to worry about the rest. Did you purchase cryptographic currency? Basically okay. is what it's asking. And so by purchasing cryptographic per, uh, currency, that's kind of a trick. Yes, that's, it is. Right. So yes. we can, with good conscience, all of us say no. If unless you bought used coins to buy other coins from someone else, uh, then it's not a, a purchase. The only time it's a purchase where you'd have to answer yes is if you use coins to buy someone else's coins. Okay, John, uh, I am going to make you co-host, and uh, John, I'm going to be the skeptic here who there are going to be people saying, you know, it's guys like John Jay who are <laughs> going to get people in a lot of trouble. So can you please go to the source, go to the IRS website and show us where they actually say this? Okay. It's not going to be said like that because it's oh. an accounting practice. And this, I will give you something you guys can reference. Okay. This is what you had alluded to it earlier. And what you're reading on the internet about, reporting gains, which are the increase in value measured in dollars of your coins, or reporting trades between coins that you own, like your own Litecoin to your own Bitcoin, reporting that, those transactions, 
This is based on the presumption that you are using accrual-based accounting, like a big corporation would. So that this is a completely different conversation. You should not be even reading that stuff. It does not pertain to us. People filing 1040s, I don't know of anyone who, who uses any type of accounting but what's known as cash basis accounting. So cash basis just means what you see is what you get. If you have the money now, if you realize the dollars, if you have the right to spend the dollars, if you sold your coins and Coinbase is holding your dollars and you have the right to do whatever you want with those dollars, that's when you have the gain. Not when the value goes up and then December 31st comes around. No, that's for big corporations. You're not <laughs> doing that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's, 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 they're very tricky on this language. So, and your account so, so, to understand this. Okay. So, so let's say that I'm naive and I'm like, yeah, I got into crypto first week of January. I've bought and sold some coins and darn it. There's this software that, that people keep telling me about that I can upload all my transactions and it'll spit out exactly how much that I owe that I can give to my accountant. So that's just all, uh, uh, almost theft. <laughs> Uncle Sam's picking my pocket just because I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm too dumb to know better. Okay. I'm gonna let you guys decide and sure. I can answer questions about this, but let me just, <laughs> let me just read if I could just briefly. Okay. I just happen to, I'm, I'm writing an article on this. I think I'm finished with it. I'm going to publish it on Ace of Coins. Okay. This is the disclaimer from Coin Tracker. Now, you guys can look at all the software you'd like to use. I'm going to recommend right now, never, ever, ever use the Coin Tracker software on any of the exchanges. It's completely wrong. Wow. It's completely wrong. Wow. You guys heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen, because Uncle Vigilante doesn't know shit, but I'm not afraid to ask questions and have smart guests on. So let's let benefit from John right now. You decide for yourself. I'm going to read if I could. Just all briefly. right. This is going to be good. This is what Coin Tracker says. And after all the conditions in terms of conditions of the license on the software, it says, we endeavor to keep Coin Tracker and the services as secure as possible. But you hereby, you hereby acknowledge that no system involving the transmission of information by the Internet or the electronic storage of data is completely secure. We're not liable for any loss, theft, unauthorized access, disclosure, copying, use, or modification of your personal data that occurs outside our reasonable control. The company also makes, now that first part has to do with your privacy. So we, you know, that yeah. we can understand that, yeah. you know, sure, they might have some disclaimers on that, but the company also makes no warranties as to the reliability or accuracy, completeness, or quality of any information on Coin Tracker or obtained through the services you agree that the company is not liable for any errors, omissions, loss, or damage, which may be caused by your use of coin tracker or services to the fullest extent permitted by law. Any damage that, you, that, may, you, that, that uh, may occur to you through your computer system as a result of your loss of data from your coin tracker services is your sole responsibility. Now there's, there are more disclaimers, but basically, and this is true if you ask your accountant, you can ask your accountant as well. I'm going to sign a tax return and I'm going to act upon your advice and I'm going to do what you tell me. And I want to know, um, are you liable if, if I'm accused of a mistake or if I make a mistake on, my, on the uh, 1040 form, um, do you have any liability as my CPA? And he will tell you, it's probably already disclosed to you that he has no liability whatsoever. The IRS will even tell you that. Yeah. Even though he even may sign for the return, you already, you guys probably already know this. Yeah. And, and the other part of this is when you sign a 1040, it's under penalties of perjury. And guess who's signing it? Only one person on the earth. That's you. So you exclusively have all the liability. Coin Tracker has zero liability. That software and whoever wrote it is not trying to help you. They're trying to get you into creating a certain accounting practice for you because that's what the system is. Coinbase, I believe, is part of the system of corralling people into a certain accounting practice. I mean, that's a very narrow right. thing to say, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you should make your own determination based upon things that I just read to you. They're not taking yeah. any responsibility at all, nor do they have any liability. And if you look at the case law, you'll find out where cases have been brought before the. Keep talking, John. My, my camera went out. I'm going to go try to push some things together. Maybe it comes back. Hold on. Yeah, you'll find case law from cases where 
a person try to use a defense of such as uh, I was relying upon the advice of my accountant and that is actually not a legal defense. So you exclusively have all the liability. Once you understand that, then you realize, okay, you're on the hook here and you have to understand what you're doing and you have to, you have to do what you believe to be correct, legally correct. You have to make your own conclusions. Not even your attorney is liable. So that includes me. I mean, you could, you could just ignore everything I'm telling you. Um, but I'm just saying you cannot, because someone has a CPA next to his name, the letter CPA, or a bar, he's a bar member, you cannot rely upon him because you have all the liability. So I mentioned cash basis, cash basis accounting. Let me go back to that. <laughs> I'm go. back like a good rash. All right. So I mentioned cash basis accounting. That means when you realize a gain, not because the value of your asset increases or decreases. Now, if you want to, I've, I've talked to people before that they had a substantial loss and they, after I explained everything, they said, you know, it makes sense to me to uh, account for this as a substantial loss. Even though I didn't realize the gain, I didn't dispose of the asset. Hey, that's up to you because you are the boss. You are the one with all the liability and that's why you can choose your accounting practice. You, de you decide that. Wow. And once you do, you're on the hook for it. Okay. Whatever it costs you. Okay. So, because I need to always simplify things down to a level that even I'll understand them. My takeaway from this is I'm not going to, I'm not going to check that box because I'm definitely not doing 200 transactions and it's between coins. So, uh, you know, I'm in, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you can always avoid that situation. There's no reason why you'd end up having to say yes on that form. Once you understand that. Okay. Okay. That's great. That simplifies things. Takes a lot of angst out of my brain. Let me uh, look Marco to everybody, but the beneficial interest did not change from the above question. Okay. Uh, we, I think we dealt with that. Uh, thank you. I did this and it was within a few days. So it's too bad that 1031 exchange doesn't apply. Right. There is no such thing for cryptos. What do you mean? What is, what's that? Mean? A 1031 exchange has to do with uh, real estate and real estate investing. There is no such thing for cryptos or gold or okay. other assets. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what is the best way then, John, to take profits? Okay. Good question. There's, there's many ways. Um, I like to take profits where I'm not going to pay a tax first and I want to do it legally. I don't want to be losing sleep at night. Mm -hmm. So you never, you, you never want to have a gain. So let's say I put X in and now I have 10 X or 20 X or whatever. Yep. And now it's time to buy some stuff. I'm going to reallocate. I'm going to, I'm going to keep my, my new net worth. Now, now I know that I can take a hundred percent of my new net worth and I can put it into an asset. And I always like to use the example of a hotel because a hotel would be an asset because hopefully it's going to make some money and it's not my liability. It's not my house. Okay. Your house is not, your ass. Okay, can we can we back the bus up? I you, and the only reason why, and I'm not trying to be rude, is you've used the hotel analogy on me before, but in my brain, I'm like, that's never going to apply to me. So, can you rework the analogy to where it might might apply to some of us who, uh, okay, might not have the grand ambitions of finding a hotel that's going to give us recurring. Uh, well, income? what would you do with? 10 times more money than you're used to having, you would want to invest it probably. And right. a really safe investment would be buying your neighbor's house and leasing it back to somebody. That you could probably handle, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, so let's say you're gonna do that. Now you're gonna become a real estate investor just because you have way too much money that you didn't, you know, you don't really need it. I mean, I hate that it's fun, it sounds yeah. funny to say that. <clears throat> so. But what about my fancy pants and lollipops I want to buy? And my and my, and my, okay. and my new car and my uh and 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 my boat at the marina. And I'm okay. just I'm kind of joking, but not. I'm like, it's kind of like all of this, we're putting a lot of time and expense into this. And at the end of the day, when you have these mad gains, you kind of want to be able to okay. have a little fun with it. Let's let's talk about that then. Let's buy a nice car that you want to have to amaze and impress your neighbors and your wife and whatever. Okay. <laughs> so it's not, not a $50,000 car. You right. Skate. Okay. 
Yeah. We want a Lambo, man. You're not a crypto unless you have a Lambo. Exactly. How much is a Lambo these days? What, 250. 250. Let's go 250. All right. So let's say we want to put 250 in a Lambo. Um, you go to the dealer, you make your deal, and you decide how you're going to buy the car. So you can pay cash for the car. So you sell your coins for dollars and you buy the car. And that's completely reportable and taxable. You have no tax benefit there if you did it that way. Right. But that's your option. You don't have to do it that way. What? Yeah. What? Amen. Okay. Okay. So here's how you not do it that way. Go buy the car, make your deal. And then you tell the dealer, how do you want the thing titled? So either you're going to take the title of the car in your name and you're going to tell the dealer, my uncle Bob or my company is financing this. And here's his, the lender's name, address, all this stuff. And the dealer will write up your title documents and send that information to your lender, which could be your own company. I know that we're stepping a little bit f- in, into the future. So I have a 575E called, I'm not going to say what it's called, but uh, uh, it, and you're, 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 it's an unincorporated uh, private association. Okay. And I know you're fami- very familiar with those. Mm-hmm. You create them, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and and uh, as I understand it, that pretty much creates a brick wall between it's like I have all the control, but I own none. Mm-hmm. And it's a yeah. brick wall between my social security number and any mm-hmm. your estate. assets and my right. estate. Right. Your estate. So, so we separate your personal liability from property. So in that case, the Lambo could be purchased by the, uh, the, the, the entity, right? Or the, okay. the entity, it be titled to the entity. I guess There's that's... two ways to do this without having a tax liability. One is use a loan and the other is don't take the title to the property. So if we're talking about a car, a vehicle, that is going to be denominated in dollars. You can't avoid that. You can't just say to the IRS, well, it's priced in cryptos. So therefore it's not taxable. It's not going to fly. You'll lose every time. So you just can't have the gain by buying something in your name unless you structure it as a loan. Okay. So I can buy I can buy the thing, the vehicle, let's say, which is a liability. It's my car. I can buy it in my name, but I have to use a lender. And so like what you're talking about, I need to have a third party lender. So I'm going to have to set up a trust or a company or like you're saying a 575 or whatever that is. Mm-hmm. It's got to be a third party. It cannot be part of my estate, which is very easy to set up. And mm-hmm. that becomes the lien holder on the vehicle, even though I might be the owner. That is how you avoid you're moving a gain from property or an, an asset, you're selling the asset for the dollars and you're using the dollars to buy something else, some other property. And at no point did you take a gain as long as you right. do it that way. Right. So I tell everybody that I'm not going to, I'm not going to suggest something in here unless it's kid tested, uncle approved. And I will tell you guys that I have set up a 575 E if you are at least, if you're interested in that, um, just email me. Best email, uh, the address is the Uncle Vigilante at Gmail. The Uncle Vigilante at Gmail. Uh, just put like 575E in the header, and then I'll just set you up with the guy. Or I, I'll, uh, John, you know, you tell me if if you do this, how you, you know, what what it's, how can how how can I direct people to you and and it be efficient for you? Like, is there a specific thing in the header that if you saw that you'd be like okay somebody's interested in yeah well yeah if in uh in the subject line if you you just want to mention you know uncle uh, uncle vigilante in the subject okay. line that'd be easy okay. Um, okay i use limited liability companies you can also use trust organizations you just have to understand what you're doing and it's not very complicated you want to separate the property in a title that's out of your estate so it's it's not part of your will let's say like if, if you guys write up a will the property we're talking about like crypto is like for myself my crypto portfolio is not in my estate so if i had a will it it would not be mentioned however my family and heirs and everything would understand how to access that asset if i were to disappear no longer need it you know people say if something happens to me i would say what if you get killed <laughs> get, get abducted by aliens or you know get lost yeah. at sea or go in a coma or something yeah. yeah. If you get hit by a bus, I think that is a real pain point within this whole crypto ecosystem that I think the company that solves. What, uh, all right. 
Whoever came in, please mute. All right. <laughs> Whoever can anybody in the I, I just put the uh, Zoom link if somebody wants to come in. If you do come in, do us a favor. Make sure you're muted just because, uh, you know, we love you and we love your your <laughs> kids, but it kind of makes for bad TV. <laughs> um, so so let's see I, that derailed me. We're, what were we talking about? Regarding the transferring your crypto windfall, let's say, into a liability like a vehicle. And right. then there's different methods of taking the title so that it's not your gain or um, you're not disposing oh, of an asset. I know what I was talking about. Okay. The pain The pain point yep. is I call, you know, the get hit by a bus syndrome. It's, it's like, I know everything that's gone in to getting fully deployed over the last six months. For me personally, it went from, you know, a, 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 a commission check at the end of the year to where I had like 30 grand and somebody told me invest in XRP. And I'm like, what's XRP? And they're like, it's, it's, it's crypto. Like I should know. And I'm like, yeah, know nothing about it. How do, how do I, how do I buy crypto? And that's when my journey began. He told me about <laughs> Coinbase, Coinbase Pro, Exodus, let, you know, uh, Trezor T wallet. And so I started my journey and everybody who, everybody starts the same way. How the heck do I get my fiat dollars from my bank into a fully deployed portfolio of coins? Crypto is hard. There is, you are your own bank and customer service sucks. Mm -hmm. You know, when things go wrong, the only toll-free 800 number is your own. And like I said, that usually doesn't work out too well. So you have to be super, super careful and anal on how you stay safe. Now, if you look in the links below, uh, I have a couple of guys that if you want some crypto consultations, uh, both Jaron and Nathan, uh, they're, they're, th frankly, they're so busy. It's, it's kind of, you just got to get on their schedule, but they do such excellent work. And I've had so many people come back and say, thank goodness that I, I got it. And, and they're cheap guys. I, I'm not saying cheap. They're inexpensive. When you consider about how much you could lose, it's stupid not to have your hands held at the beginning of this. Just trust me on that. <laughs> Everyone that's done it has looked at it as an investment, not an expense. Or you could say hundred bucks is too much. You know, I'm going to keep it and then you're going to lose it. I promise you, you will lose it <laughs> times 10. So, but everybody starts on that journey. You go through and you start realizing there are these things called keywords. And, oh, what do you mean? You can't just copy and paste them on your computer or take a picture of them, you know, for so that you can, you, you, you can have them later if you ever lose them and you have to restore your wallet or your funds. And so all of these things that, uh, that you can't do, but you don't know you can't do it as a newbie. That's, that's a pain point in this. And so there are, there's training and there are people who can hold your hand. Now, once you get fully deployed and you start realizing and you do a personal inventory and say, my bag of coins came from probably seven different exchanges. And then I have them all over the place because some cold storage wallets don't hold some coins and some have their own wallets online. And then you have apps and then you have uh, 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 two, uh, two factor authentication that if you get hit by a bus, you better have your wife cut off your right thumb, you know, and, 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 and freeze it, whatever. But <laughs> if, if I got hit by a bus, John, and I'm not even kidding you, I am not kidding you. I have first page. I have, your contact information that I have told my wife that if I get hit by a bus with how anal I've been with my notes, if you just got this to John Jay, he would know what to do with it. Sure. I I, I, and, and I do did that just because mm -hmm. I trust you. I have another mm -hmm. person's contact information, right. but, but so John, the, the pain point and what I think is a huge business opportunity mm -hmm is if you could think of something that would have the credibility of like Brinks, you know, Brinks okay, trucks okay. To, tr tr to protect it. If there was a service that I could sign up to, to where I could actually be open 
with my, or there was some kind of secure way to be able to, <laughs> when, when, when I, everything you're not supposed to do, if there was a secure way other than writing it in my, mm -hmm. you know, diary that, 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 that I could store it somewhere that would be hack proof. And then if I got hit by a bus, the only instruction, my wife would have, you know, one set of instructions, call this 1-800 hit by truck, you know, and yeah. give them this special key phrase after you click your heels three times right. and give your dog a kiss. That's going to unlock the buried treasure. And then they're going to help you be able to access it and, and, and get it out. Other than that, I don't know what my wife's going to do. I mean, I really don't. I like your creativity because what you created is a, essentially third party custodianship with two yeah. factor authentication with using me and someone else as a backup. And I don't even know it, which is fine because you know that I know enough to where if I see your notes, I know exactly what to tell your wife. Exactly. I never yeah. heard this before, guys. I mean, this is the first time he's explained this to me, but you can certainly do it that way. Yeah, um, it's, so been, it's, it's, it's yeah. been weighing on me a lot. You know, it, it's just, and, two and methods. I, I, okay. There, there's two methods I like to use. And, and let's, let's talk about briefly. Okay. Most people understand probate, I guess, or a will so that your property uh, interests are dispersed according to your will during a probate proceeding, if you died or went into a coma, lost your mind, you know, lost at sea, abducted by aliens, is all I can say. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we get that. You don't need to do that because the property does not have to be in your state. You can separate the property of the cryptos into a structure like an LLC or a trust and take it out of your estate. And then you can prepare a will that identifies that property that's not in your estate and bring it back into your state by mentioning it in your will. So realize what you're doing, okay? And it does not have to be in your estate. I don't want it in my estate. I want my estate to almost be zero dollars. Mm. It'll never go to probate when I die or whatever. It's never going to probate. What I want is the people that I care about to have access to the credentials in one way or another. So right now they can access the credentials by just going to a place and getting the credentials, just like you described. Your wife has access to a thing, a, a book or something, mm -hmm. and then she knows what to do. It tells her what to do. Like one example may be, here's the combination to a safe and, and you go to this address and you can access it. And they never, let's say your wife never heard of that before because you kept it a secret. That right. way she has plausible deniability and all this. And you know, there's a lot of other things to consider. There's, there's that, okay, which is credentials. So if someone has your credentials, like for example, if I have a bank account with a lot of money in there or a lot of cash flow in there and I disappeared and my wife needs to use it, well, she has my credentials. She can go to my desk and, oh, and get a, my calendar out. And she could see in there, there's some information and she can log into the bank account and then she can do a couple of things. She can write a check on it and clear the funds out or she can step in my place and keep on using the account even though I'm dead or something. Right, right. right. Okay. So there's that. The other way so people is- People can relate to that. If I, if I die and my wife uh -huh. knows my, my uh, online banking information, she can go in as if she's me, right? And, yeah. uh, and if, if, she, if she's really mad at me, she could just, you she know, do that too, she yeah. can wipe me out. <laughs> now she can't go in the bank and identify herself if she's not a signer on the account, which she does not need to be a signer on the account. She does not need to go in the bank. All she needs right. to do is access the account somehow. Even if she doesn't have online access, all she needs to do is write a check on the account. She can literally forge your signature or write Charlie Brown on there or stamp your signature and yeah. clear the funds from your account. It's very simple. Yeah. Okay, so there's that. The other one is third-party custodianship, which I'm gonna tell you my way of doing this. And I'm not saying there's a particular service that will do it. You have to arrive at a contract that allows you to do it. And I may come up with that in the near future, but let me just describe it. If you went to, and I'm not, I'm not promoting attorneys, I hate them, but yep. they are bonded. Okay, they are bonded. So if I have an attorney hold property for me, or hold an envelope for me, or a black box under a contract, that is pretty secure. And mm -hmm. the attorney, I would hope, I'm probably gonna go through an attorney who's in a law firm, and then one, one attorney, and there'll be successive attorneys who have control over that, or have custodianship and liability with maintaining that black box or envelope or whatever it is. So if I disappeared, my children or my wife or whatever, can go to that location and I and provide whatever is needed to get access to that 
thing. Yeah. An envelope, a book. The attorney doesn't even know what's in there. All his job is to take custodianship of it. And here's what's cool about it. You get attorney client privilege. Ah. Yeah. I use that for IRS, by the way, guys. It's cool. So I'm not gonna get into that too far, but you can use attorneys for a lot of cool things. You don't need them for legal advice. I hardly <laughs> use them for legal advice. <laughs> I use them for their bonds and their attorney client privilege. <laughs> and I use their paralegals too for legal research. But anyways, <laughs> use them for because custodianship of things that get access to the things that are valuable. And you can use two-factor authentication with the law firm. So that way, you don't even need the law firm. The law firm can be a backup just in case okay. the two-factor, you know, it failed or something like you have. You know, you have me and then someone else you can go to. So there's, you know. John, you I'm, I'm yeah, just yeah. telling you, <laughs> we need to turn this into a business. I'll evangelize the shit out of it as, as a, as a and co-founder. I need three clones right now. I, I know I'm you do. I'm 1,500 emails behind. I know. I to, um, <laughs> One I of them is fine, by the way. Could you please I, respond? <laughs> you know what? I actually have to go search. If it's important, I have to search on your name or email address to go find it. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm sorry, well, guys. But, I, was, uh, I, I was informed by a little birdie that my new strategy needs to be to just call you like three times in a row. And if yes, you see. Yes, yes, that'll work. <laughs> okay. Oh, my gosh. Now it's not going to work after a week. So yeah. Like it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> right, but if I could, oh, if shit. I, could, <laughs> I, I forgot. Could, your whole tribe is in here. <laughs> I, I wanted to, if I could introduce this concept. Now, uh, someone, one of my clients called me to task yesterday. Okay. She kind of, she said, okay, John, but uh, so how do you do it? And I said, okay, okay, hold on a second. And I actually felt like. I was in my 10th grade algebra class, and this is what I wanted my, my list to remember, my members to remind me of, which I remember just now. My, my 10th grade algebra teacher, and by the way, guys, I got an A in algebra. I, <laughs> I'm not a smart person in math, but I managed to get an A. She was just a really good teacher, and it was her first year. She was like 22 or 24, and I remember on, in the first semester or whatever, she was so nervous. Anyways, you, she was like nervous. You could tell she was like her first year teaching. Yeah. But I remember it because... Her name was Fluck. It, it was Miss Fluck. Now, you can imagine what, you know, 16, 17 year old students did with that. Fluck. Yeah. Right? Did you do your fucking homework? You know, stuff like that. So, anyways, we got along just fine. But I got A's and I had to because, you know, I was competing with my brother and whatever. So, anyways, so. I, I, I felt like I was in her class and that she was sitting next to me laughing at me because I'm trying to remember a very simple algebraic function. So this client is telling me, how do I figure out what tax do I pay if she wanted to take out X dollars from her, this um, uh, outrageous windfall she just got already from cryptos. She had a small amount in there. Now it's this huge amount. And she wanted to take a little teeny tiny amount, which is really 5%. She wants to take like 5% and do something on her house. Like it was a home improvement. So yeah. that's personal. That's exactly like, what we should be wanting to do. Okay. And now, now, in her case, because of the nature of the transaction, there's, it's very difficult to legitimately avoid a tax on that. And she was fine with that. So I said, well, here's how you would calculate it. So she, I'm going to give you the numbers. It was $20,000 out of $400,000. Now, she started with like 23500 Good for her. Yeah. So she wanted to take out her 20000 and do whatever. So, so I... The thing is, you have to back out your um, cost basis. Yeah. So how how do you do that when, like, if, if she's going to spend the whole four hundred thousand, well, it doesn't take anyone who knows algebra to say, well, okay, just deduct the twenty three thousand five hundred that you started with, and then the balance is, you know, three seventy six, whatever. Sure. But you have to come up with a, a way to reverse that and figure out on the percent that she's taking from the gain, what would be a gain, it's not yet a gain. The twenty thousand is a gain. What percent does she need to deduct from that to, to deduct her cost basis? And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the article. It's going to be on Ace of Coins, but I'm going to explain it to you guys. Yeah. Okay. So you just simply, I'm going to read, I'm going to have to read this. Okay. So sure. This is, I'm reading you from the article. To calculate reportable gross income after taking a small portion from the new principal, your original investment, okay, which is worth much more, for example, you subtract the product multiplying together the product of the original investment and the amount you're taking divided by the new value of the principal. So you take like the $20,000 she's taken out, you divide it by the new principal and you get a ratio. In this case, it's 1 20th or 5%. It's 380. So it's, it's 20 divided by 380. But we're taking the other part of that. We're taking the 5%, which is going to come out to be 
uh, well, we're not done yet. We have to multiply that by the amount she started with, which is 23,500. So take 5% of 23,500 and you'll end up with 1175. Okay. Okay, now that is the amount you back out of what is going to be taxable. So the 20,000 is taxable, but it's taxable 20,000 minus the 1175 gives you like eight, uh, 18,000 something, 800. Right. 18,825, right? Yeah. That is your gross income, reportable, taxable out of okay. the 20,000. Once you deduct your cost basis, you're not going to see that anywhere else. And how did I get that? I went and I just, I, I, on the phone with her, I did that on the fly. And then I went and researched to make sure I didn't screw up. And I think I got it right. If you guys want to correct me, I don't think, I think I got it right. So, but anyways, if anybody, any of you is better at this than me, you probably are, <laughs> please tell me, but I think I got this right. So um, if you want to test this out, you'll see the, uh, the examples here, but basically that's how you figure out the reportable taxable amount and after you deduct your cost basis when you're not going to take out the full return. Now, yeah. if you have, if you have short-term, long-term, like in her case, it was a five-year period where she invested $23,500 over five years. Oops. So she has short-term and long-term gains. So what you want to do is that equation I just described, you want to do it for the short-term gains number. So the money that you bought in during the short-term period, that's one equation. And the other amount is the long-term. So you have two equations. You do the same equation both times, and then you figure out your tax rate, and then that's your total. You add those together and you're done. Okay? Okay. So she's still paying taxes. <laughs> In that case, she would. Now, you can avoid that, but guys, I'm telling you, I can tell you how to avoid 100%, but you're wasting your time. Pay the tax on personal stuff. Pay the tax on your living expenses. It's okay. Don't pay the tax on $10 million or a million. You know, Go put that. Here's your biggest risk. Trust me. Your biggest risk is not having a way to reinvest the money that you, once you get your gains out of cryptos and you're like, okay, I'm done with cryptos for the most part. I need to get in something and be a, a responsible investor now because <laughs> yeah. I'm rich. Okay, what do I do? You would be stupid to go into the stock market. That's my premise on everything. If you guys call me on the phone and we're having a conversation, I'm always thinking in my mind, I am never gonna tell my client to go in the stock market. Why? First of all, there's no market. Correct me if I'm wrong. No, you're there's right. No market. Okay, so there's a couple of things you want to consider. Now, I'm going to have some videos on this, but we can talk more about it. Yeah. There are four types of investments you want to look into. Okay. It's private equity. Yep. Which is maybe a share or stock that's not on the stock market. Right. Same idea, not in the stock market. That means you sit Sorry. down with your, your, your broker or agent or somebody with the owner or his agent, and you negotiate a purchase of a share of his company. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. That's a private equity. It doesn't always look like that, but just as an example, there's private equity, real assets, like things you see, <clears throat> you drive around town and you see supply chains, you see suppliers, you see FedEx, you see infrastructure. Okay. These are real assets. Real estate is another one. Real estate is probably of the two things I recommend people get into to reallocate their, once they get their new windfall is real estate's one of them, unless you just really hate it get into it. And there's many, many ways to do that. I'm not going to talk about that. And then okay. another one is private credit, which again, I'm not really qualified to get into all that stuff. I'm going to have professionals on and we're going to talk about all that, but seriously consider a reallocation plan into other assets. And that is your biggest risk, not having that developed, not okay. taxes. <clears throat> no, it's excellent. I mean, so what you're saying is the time to, the time isn't when it's, when, when the IRS bill comes due, to figure this out, the time to war game it is now. Mm -hmm. And so for someone to actually study that strategy, understand it, maybe be prepared to deploy, uh, is, the, is that where you come in? Do you help people do that through ACE? My, my expertise has been for about 30 years, helping people with assets or cash flow that never exceeded $5 million a year. So just understand who I am. I am not a mid-level type investor. I don't raise capital for large hundred million dollar deals. I have to go to professionals to figure that out. And this is the first time in my life I've ever even considered doing that. So I'm kind of like you guys. I just understand maybe a little bit more because of 
I've done that for small businesses. I've done that for investors and myself and my partners. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm out of my league in some sense, but at the same time, I understand after seeing thousands of situations where people could have done this thing. I mean, imagine if you were given hindsight when you were 10 years old, hindsight of every important decision you could make in your entire life. Wouldn't that be wow. awesome? Yeah. So I kind of get a bird's eye view of people that screwed things up and they're coming to me for help after the fact. And so right. I, have to, I have to unbury them. I have to put the fire out and I've figured out most of it. And in doing that, I've done a lot of things for my family and myself and my net worth based on mistakes I've seen people make. That's now, excellent. Yeah, I get to look at their mistakes in hindsight without any liability. So it's really given me an advantage. So I would just suggest that to you that stop being distracted by taxes. Sure, I don't want to pay them either. And you shouldn't. You don't do stupid stuff, but don't don't go out of your way to avoid the taxes more. But more importantly, have some sort of plan like, okay, if you don't know anything else, just think, all right, I'm going to invest in real estate. I'm going to call some guy that does that. I'm going to call a guy that does that. If you guys don't know who that is, connect with some people. And I'm just going to recommend the Georgia Real Estate Investors Association. Georgia Real is what they call it. Subscribe to everything that you can find with those guys. Okay. Connect into that network. They're across the whole country. It's not just Atlanta. It's everywhere. These are entrepreneurs and real estate investors. They will tell you 20 ways to get into real estate. It depends on your preferences. Okay. So anyways, that's, that's one thing. Yeah. Georgia Real. Do you do you have a website for that? It's just you just Google it. Georgia Real or Georgia Real Estate Investors Association. And even if you hate real estate, if you think it's a horrible investment, connect anyways because you're going to be in the uh, the network of entrepreneurs that think like I do or think like Uncle Vigilante. You know. Yeah. Uh, so um, you want to connect with those people. I don't care if you have ten million or two million or fifty thousand dollars. I mean. You want, you want to start looking at that if you haven't already. Yeah. That is called responsible tuition. It's kind of how I look at it is. Yeah. That's a, that's a good word that you brought up because, you know, my partners and I will laugh and I've, I've lost a lot of money. I mean, I'm sure people that have done things and taken, I call it taking money out for a spin. All right. So if I take, <laughs> if I take my 50 grand out for a spin or hopefully I'm taking someone else's money out for a spin right? <laughs> because he's better at taking the risk than me. Hopefully he's betting on me and I make a good decision. But if I lose money, uh, we call it tuition. And we do that in jet. We say that in jest because you kind of have to laugh. If you lose money, you try to do the best thing you can and you still lose money. You should learn from it. Yeah. And the price of that is what you lost. And we call it tuition. Hopefully you learn from that. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's, what, that's why everybody who's suffering through this week of crypto needs to uh, just, just take a deep breath and learn from the mistakes that other people made back in 2017 and 2013. And it's just this four year cycle. Um, and I think my sense is that we're probably good for about three of these in a year to where you're, you're just going to end up, you know, getting crushed on your block folio app. And I'll throw out something to you, uh, John, see what you think just kind of my new personal strategy because I suck at taking profits because I have in my head, I've been having that little, you know, IRS notion in my head. So now that's mm -hmm. cured and I can think a little mm -hmm. bit differently. Thank you very much. Um, but, but, uh, <laughs> and this may offend some people if you, if, but, but this is, look, this is, this is the uncle vigilante show. If you uh, follow me, <laughs> if you follow me on YouTube, uh, what you'll get from me are interviews like this. And then I like to, you know, since John got me started on this losing weight, I like to keep it off. So I go for a walk and I also like a cigar. I smoke, I, you know, I, I don't drink anymore. So my only kind of vice I have anymore is really just smoking a cigar. So I used to sit on my butt in my backyard and smoke a cigar and it takes like an hour and a half. And I'm like, you know what? I just need to move. So I started walking and I started just having, having a cigar walking, you know, like an hour and a half. And then um, uh, my channel launches and I'm, st I'm, I'm feeling guilty all the time. Feeling like this is inefficient. Man, now I have to, if I'm going to exercise, if I'm going to get my cigar in, where am I going to find the hour and a half to do my show? And so then I got one of these gimbals to where now I just combine it all. So I go on cigar walks. And I talk to you, I have some notes, and I'll 
walk and because I have cigar bits, I'll spit. So that's what you're going to get. You're going to be gonna <laughs> me talking off the top of my head with a little, a few notes of just kind of, you know, free forming it. So I was taking a walk after the, the, after we, the first, I mean, today was really bad, but was it yesterday? It was really, really bad. I think it was yesterday. The first really bad happened. And I started my walk and I said, do you remember John Holmes? <laughs> and I don't know if you do, John, but John Holmes was a, uh, was a porn star back in the seventies who just had a ginormous, you know what? And, 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 I'm, and I'm like, have you ever had diverticulitis? It's so painful. If you've had that, it's just really painful. You know, it's, it has to do with your, your cavity down there and getting, and, and anyway, I said, I said, well, what just happened today was kind of like sitting on John Holmes lap. <laughs> and, and, and so, and so I, I'm, I'm, I'm like, everybody, what, what's pissing me off is everybody we're all bent over taking it from John Holmes right now. It doesn't feel very good. So I decided that I'm going to adopt a new strategy because what I find myself being fully deployed in crypto is I don't have any dry powder to buy the dip. So when everyone smugly starts talking about, well, yeah, just consider it, you know, a gift. Uh, we get to go buy crypto on, on sale. I'm like screw you with what <laughs> with what homes and and so I uh, I thought okay well you know what let's learn from this I have no dry powder and it seems like this goes like this three times a year when I look back at the charts and for those of you who don't believe that I am really good at charts let me just share with you. This is my chart analysis. <laughs> so that allows me, I can, I've called everything, by the way. I, I, I can prove it. Uh, all I have to do is act like I'm a YouTube influencer and talk about how I have called everything. So anyway, those are my charts. And uh, so you could see it, that I have great credibility when I say that it seems like this happens three times. So I'm like, I'm going to dedicate May 19th as John Holmes Day just to keep it up here that do I want to be bent over and, and take it from John Holmes ever again? No. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to on purpose with intent, whenever I have my bag of crypto or a coin, let's say that I invested a hundred dollars in the coin. I am going to be very disciplined when that coin gets to two X I'm going to take, I'm going to take 25% of the total and I'm going to turn it into USDT. That's going to be my dry powder for the inevitable dip. So that's my John Holmes bag. So that, that, that's what I suggest everybody does because, you know, I'm such a master investor. <laughs> this is not investment advice, but I'm just trying to war game it, right? Because that's what we should do when we go through and, and we get our, our negative experiences, we should learn from it. So I'm <clears throat> going to take that. And now the hardest thing for me is going to be to watch in a bull market when everything starts going up again, being able to look at that, uh, that, that let's call it, if, if, if I invested a thousand, it went two X, so at that point in time, I'm going to be disciplined and I'm going to take 25%, which is 500, put it into my John Holmes bag, which is going to be $500 in USDT. Now I have to stare that in the face every day, not going up. Now it's not going down, but it's not going up. And all my other coins are probably going to go up, right? But if I do that and I get disciplined, I'm always, now that I don't have to worry about the, the profit, Right. I, I mm -hmm. used to think that 25 or that five hundred dollars. Now I have to take, you know, a percentage of that and put it in another IRS bag. But now I know I don't have to. So so uh, uh, that five hundred dollars, then how great are we going to feel when you have the really big correction of 30 to 50 percent like we've realized, you know, th this past week? Now you can swoop in and truly have some dry powder to buy the dip. What do you think of that strategy? Tom? That makes total sense. And I'm not uh, an expert on this. Uh, there are some really good experts. Um, 
you know, Bitcoin Academy, Crypto J is really good at this. He He's a scientist when it comes to it. But I generally just realize that like you do, like most people do, okay, when, when the price goes up against the dollar, I'm going to start taking profits. I'm not going to wait and try to time the market and sell at the top. I'm just going to take profits, which I did. I took profits like maybe six weeks ago. I took it over a period of time. And, and yeah, I had the dry powder. So now when the price is low, I'm going to be buying back in. Yeah, so, so you did that. So you yeah, did. And you were visible. Really, yeah, it's very unusual for me to do that, but you, you almost can't avoid it. I mean, gosh, it's such a big well, all thing, of us, you know? most of us did avoid it, but that's because greed has kicked in. And that's where, that's what, seriously, open conversation yeah. to everyone. I mean, we're, we're greedy people and we think the tree grows to the sky and we think it won't happen to us and all of that. And we don't necessarily learn from our mistakes. So the next time everything goes green, we're going to be like, oh yeah, I'm going to make everything up now. And uh, we just have to be, that's why for me, I'm going to adopt the 2X strategy. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm just going to, it's going to be automatic. So I don't even have to think about it. It's just going to be boom. Okay. I see it's up. It's 2X. I'm going to take that. That's my John Holmes bag. And, uh, and then I'm going to feel really, really smug when I can buy the dip. And then I'll be able to tell everyone, well, you should just buy the dip. It's very disciplined. You want to you want to adopt some sort of rules like that and follow the rules without any emotional involvement. Right. Just follow the rules. Yeah. Right. Don't, don't have this delusion. Now, that does or... lead me to a question for those people who who did make an investment and then they took their money out. Let's say they had a reason. So let's say your client invested that twenty three five, um, uh, you know, a week ago. And that 23.5, we expected it to go up and she invested in some coins. And now she's finding that 23.5 is worth about 12 grand, (laughs) you know, but she has an emergency. So she needs to take that out. Does she get to, if she has to pay taxes on the gain, does she get to declare that as a loss? It will be a loss, right? Okay. So it it goes both ways, everybody. It does go both ways. Yeah. Okay. If okay. she has to sell, um, don't sell because you your value goes down. Obviously, I mean, that's kind of silly. Stay in the investment, you know. I mean, right. it's not until you sell that you have to do all those calculations. Yeah, that's right. So yeah. they call it what diamond hands. You know, you just don't sell. Hodl me. I need a. I need to hodl some. Yeah. You can do that. You can also you can take money out like I explained. You can you can get into a liability, which is a car or a house. Right. Don't pay right. up your mortgage. Okay. People want to do that, but okay. Don't pay up your mortgage. I'm not going to get into that. There's a lot of things as to why you don't want to pay up your mortgage, but um, don't pay up personal debt with a windfall. Instead, acquire an asset. An asset is the house next door. Be the landlord. Okay. Yeah. Simple version of it. Or get into some other assets that you can research and, and team up with people and learn how to do it. Get into assets first. Okay. Then take some of the cash flow and offset your debt liability without paying off your debt first. Okay. Okay. That makes sense to me. And, and I actually hit the brakes. I think when you and I got together, man, when did I first personally meet you? Maybe seven, eight months ago. Yeah. Has it been that? Yeah. And I remember you telling me about the house cause I was getting close. I was like, you know, my dad always hammered into my head, pay off your house. Yeah. So, right. uh, it, you know, and then when you told me that, I, I stopped sending extra money to it because... Yeah, have some personal debt, like whatever you can easily um, set off by income. Now, maybe it's from your job, but ideally, the income to pay off your personal debt should come from assets. Have more debt on assets. Have less debt on personal things. Homes, okay. Cars, things like that. Okay. 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 Um, and, and for those people who are curious about at, at, at what cycle do you do take profits? Let's just look at my chart. Um, you know, green, good, red, bad. Okay, now that uh, I've educated you further, is there anybody in the uh, Zoom chat that wants to come on off mute? Thank you for thank you for doing that, by the way. I muted everybody because people were coming in and we were hearing their kids and such. So if there's anybody who wants to come off mute and uh, ask John a question, please do. If not, you have to suffer more, through more of me. John, I have a question. Yes, Greg. Um, looking at um, 
sell on some crypto and uh, paying off some personal stuff. Um, wondering if there's an advantage to, say, taking the crypto crypto directly to Coinbase and selling it USD, or convert it to USDC and then send it to Coinbase and then switch to USD from there. Well, any way to dispose of an asset to pay off a personal debt, if you're talking about, if your idea is to avoid a tax, it doesn't matter how you get the dollars because you're going to pay off a personal debt if that's what you're doing. So either way, even if your uncle Bob paid it off, it's still your tax liability. Right. I'm expecting to pay, go ahead and pay tax on this. I just was wondering if there was an advantage to either yeah. of those. Just do it with the least fees. Okay. Um, my suggestion is um, for paying off personal debt, you're going to put yourself in a, a, a possibly a bigger tax bracket if you pay off your mortgage, for example. That's why I also recommend just take some time. It wouldn't take you but maybe a few months at, at your leisure to find out how to put a small amount of the money that you would use to pay off your debt, like a, let's say $150,000 of your mortgage. You could take 15000 of that and put it into an asset that would pay off, make the mortgage payments for you. And then you would not be in a different tax bracket. So just something to think about. Mm. Okay. And are you able to give guidance on that through a consultation through? Yes. Yeah, okay. I'll write up the plan. I'll suggest how to do it for your situation. Yes. Okay. And so people would f be able to find you at aceofcoins.com and book a consultation directly through there? You can book a consultation. It'll link to privacyfight.io. I'm booked through August though. Um, so do the best you can. Um, if you want to email me directly or try me on Telegram. On Telegram, my address is at JJ Singleton. So that may be another way. Or just join my Ace of Coins uh, group on Telegram. And that is only an announcement forum where I announce my Thursday evening calls. So, uh, right. I'm, I'm actually part of those. And um, you right. set up an LLC for me um, last right. year. But right. um, I'm saving that for the big items. I've just got sure. some personal stuff I want to clear out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, Greg, have you, have you been happy with your LLC and how that process went? Yes. Uh, everything's working as it should be. Um, I have not taken profits out yet. So, um, I thought I was going to a couple of weeks ago, but I missed my target by about 50 bucks. So, <laughs> I still have it. So, okay. all right. But, um, yeah, looking forward to, uh, to, to getting um, some seed money out. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. I talked to a lot of people that have some really incredible ideas of what they're going to do with the, their new windfall. So I like to see those come to fruition next year. That would be great. Mm -hmm. That would be great. Um, so the one thing, John, that I was thinking that when, when you, you'd mentioned Georgia Real Estate Investment Association, maybe they've already figured this out. But I recently went through the process of uh, co-signing for my daughter's first home. And first of all, what a, I mean, I'd set a budget of 250 and uh, I'd, <laughs> I'd, I'd put an offer on a home and I was like fourth in line before. I mean, it, it was crazy. It took like two months to even get an offer, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So it, it's, it, I'm in Florida like you are. So mm -hmm. I don't know if it's that crazy everywhere else or just everyone wants to come to Florida and, you know, a mod, you know, a, a three bedroom, two bath, you know, it's going to be at least that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and usually people are, are given, you know, bidding, getting in bidding wars and it's mm -hmm. over, but through that process, that was when my portfolio, my crypto portfolio was getting to be rather impressive <laughs> before this crash. And I was like, man, the real estate company or the lender that figures out how to be able to allow a guy like me or people on this, you know, call or watching to pay their down payment with crypto is going to win big. But the banks, they don't want to look at crypto. They're not going to look at crypto. So uh, are there real estate companies out there or lenders out there, John, that you know of who might play in crypto? Well, I have a partner that he and I set up a service that uh, does this, and we're the only ones that do it right now that I, that I know of. So we actually work with escrow agents or banks or whatever, and we will liquidate cryptos into escrow so that you don't have a gain. We don't do, there's no 1099, no reporting. We do it legally. 
Uh, so we can do that. So if you want to go use cryptos to buy real estate, which is what I recommend, go through escrow. We can take your coins and put them into escrow for you and have everybody get be happy. Do the closing and it's all good. Oh, and there's, there's no you, are, you, you are God's <laughs> gift to humanity, I swear. I mean, <laughs> I'm serious. You, you, you actually solve problems. So anybody, do, yeah. Yeah. anybody watching right now, it just doesn't have to be Florida based, right? If somebody's buying doesn't matter a property and you want to use crypto, you can use John's service. Jeez. We can do that anywhere saying. in the world. We could take a coin, coins, whatever you want, and we can buy them from you and put the money into your escrow account so that you do not have a gain by selling your coins, selling your coins. You're not actually selling. Gosh, <laughs> that's a big damn deal. And so then, so th now, now if you want to, that's considered, okay, so let's just use my daughter's scenario, right? 250,000 bucks. And so I did the, because, you know, you, you, you taught me, I'm, I'm like, okay, interest rates are really low. I know what I can do with the money instead of putting 20% down, the PMI is like 80 bucks a month mm -hmm. and the market is going like crazy. So I thought, let's, let's just put 5% down instead of 20% yeah. down. Yeah. So I put the 5% down, but let's say I wanted to put $50,000 down and you're telling me that I could use you, you guys, to okay, let me back the bus up. I need to satisfy my lender that mm -hmm. I have fifty thousand dollars to be able to get that two hundred thousand dollar loan. Then mm -hmm. I would work with you beforehand to get that money into escrow, and then I could, when I start my application process with the bank, then I'm just telling them it's in escrow already. Do it that way. That's the that's the cleaner way to do it. Yes. Okay. So I would, we would, we would convert everything and put it in escrow first mm -hmm. before you ever open escrow, put a thousand bucks in there, make your offer. And in the meantime, let us liquidate the coins, put in escrow for you. So we add to the thousand, if that's what you want to do, if you're right. actually going to. Yeah. So, okay. Okay. Do you mind discussing your fees on that? Yeah. Well, you know, um, we, we would charge around 15%. Now, the reason why we do that is because uh, you're going to pay 39%. If you're not using, if, if you don't know what you're, if you're just going like traditionally, okay. Yeah. So we're, we're easily able to charge 15%. I will say that my clients would be able to do this with 0% and not using that type of service. So really this is for people that haven't understood how to structure what they're doing. And we already, we have it. So you can just do it shooting from the hip. You don't actually have to plan ahead. My clients have already planned ahead. They, they may not even know this. They have a structure that I've set up for them where they can, do this transaction and have zero fees. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, this, this is, this is a massive, th th that this is worth the price of admission, everybody, you know, <laughs> which by the way, if you're visiting the price of admission is, can you please hit, uh, you know, the like button down below <laughs> and please hit the subscribe button down below and maybe just maybe let's see, we're at one, 0.98 thousand subscribers. Maybe you can tell a friend or two that there's this Uncle Odd channel. Not Uncle Odd. It's Uncle Vigilante now. But an Uncle Vigilante channel. It's a, a, a channel on YouTube dedicated to newbies to where I'm just documenting my journey and uh, uh, and sharing it with you. Um, just open Kimona so that you can learn from my mistakes, my wins, uh, my my connections, my interviews, and hopefully enrich your portfolio through the process as well as mine. So help me grow the channel. Not that I need it to grow because I don't monetize anything, but uh, you know, if one is good, two is better. I'd, I'd rather see 2000 subscribers than 1000. So, um, so John, the, the, the price of admission is what you just said. So all of us who are in crypto and realize there's going to be a point in time to where you, 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 you have these gains. Now there's a way and 15% to me, John, wouldn't even think about it. Yeah, it right. It's like, it's like that is such a win to me mm -hmm. because I'm able to use my crypto. 
I mean, right. man, I don't right. have to convert it to fiat exactly. first and go through all the bullshit that, that the bank's going to ask and the IRS is going to require. I can do it seamlessly and I can still right. with confidence go to a lender and say, I want a $200,000 loan. And they're going to say, well, we, where's your down payment? I can point to John or whatever entity you are. And I can say it's already an escrow. Yeah. Just say it's an escrow. Um, we can clear seven and a half million dollars worth of crypto coins per day per client. The most we've ever done. And we just started this maybe four months ago. The most we've ever done was a million dollar real estate transaction, which was I think last month. So, John, would you mind a follow-up uh, show where we just the whole subject is is on that? I'd like to have I'd like to have uh, my good friend Mike, who was on a show recently with me, but he is uh, he owns uh, it's called Puccinelli Properties out of Richmond, Virginia, and they uh, he and his fan, his dad are have been real estate investors for a long time, and uh, he and I were just having the conversation this week that the company that figures this out is going to make bank. And so he's trying to figure it out. So I'd love to have a, a call with you and John and, uh, and, and, you know, his cousin is a tax accountant who ha happens to be just cool as ever. Oh, he's, yeah. he, he's, he's, he's one of us in that, you know, he's just the messenger, but he really works hard to try to keep our tax liabilities down. So I think any truth drops you could provide. And if he knows about this too, I just think it's good for everyone. So uh, I'd love to, I, I did have one escrow agent call me and um, she was open-minded. She's an entrepreneur. And I said, I explained, we're doing this now, but I anticipate within about a year, other escrow agents will figure out how to do it. Now it did take us about six months to set this up. It's, it, it was a project. And um, now it's set What's up. It so I imagine... What's that? What's it called? So that's I can reference. I going, that's what I was leading to. You can't ask me that because I'm not going to tell you. Okay. It's a private organization. We are not going to advertise it like a retail website. Got it. Got it's a it. Private club. We don't want to get interference from the three letter friends. 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 Okay. okay I right. like that, <laughs> and I respect that. Having my own little private club recently set up. That's what it is. Yeah, I yeah. I totally get it, and um, and you know what. Uh, we, we can, so, <laughs> so yeah, but, anyway, she, she asked me about it and, and she said, I don't want to copy you. I just want to be able to use your service. But I think a lot of escrow agents are going to say, Hey, there's a niche market out there. If I can do that, then yeah. So th we'll have competition probably next year, probably. But right now we're the only ones that I know of. That is worth a gazillion <laughs> dollars on this show. I mean, I want to, I, I, I want to have, what do you think next Friday? Yeah, next Friday, sure. Let's sure. do it next Friday. That'll be a party. Let's yeah. Make it a date, and I'm going to pre-promote the crap out of it. <laughs> I'm going to say if anybody out there has a mortgage or is 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 going to be buying a home, and you're in crypto and you'd like to be able to use your crypto, maybe not this week or next week. <laughs> Let's let it rally right. a little bit, but we're going to be back. I mean, that's the nature of this of this ecosystem is it's very volatile, but it's going to be back. But if you'd like to be able to use your crypto for a down payment uh, on a home, on a property, on an investment, uh, we have a way to where you're not going to be. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's going to be that, let's say $50,000. If I have this right, is not going to be liquidated to where it's a tax event. Correct. Right. So and, yeah, we, yeah, and we can do anything. We can buy a yacht. We have a service that actually will flag the yacht and set up the whole budget and crew it and everything and insure it. So you know, it depends on how much money you're working with. But we can. Can it go down to the level of a car? Ca cars, yachts, houses. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> it was funny. Is the lower the ticket item, uh, the more difficult it is. So a toaster oven, don't call me. If it's a car, <laughs> no problem. Right. <laughs> so. Right. Right. Yeah. So, so it's, it's, it's a percentage of the, uh, do, do you have, to, to avoid the people that want to use your service for, you know, 
something a five thousand dollar something i mean no you're not getting in for that no 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 yeah not for yeah. twenty thousand. but but if you want to buy a car or pay off large debt or or buy an asset i mean i really hope people want to buy assets most people so far just want to buy a house or pay off a mortgage so fine we do those too uh if you're gonna if you're gonna reach that seven million mark seven and a half million mark it's going to be a lot less than 15 percent as far as our fee goes right so, yeah if you're already structured and you understand how to use an llc the way i set them up you're not going to even need to do that type of service because you're already insulated from the tax liability. Okay. So, so just, you know, this is for anyone out there who just, you know, doesn't have a way to do it yet or whatever, you know, just heard about it or something. Yeah. But you know, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's like just going through the process myself recently to know that I could take my, because I want to keep it simple to know that I could take my gains in crypto and be able to put them as a down payment on a house, just to keep it simple, through an investment vehicle that you've set up that I can then just point the lender to, mm -hmm. to say, that's where my money is, it's in escrow, mm -hmm. and you can go verify it, it's ready to be deployed at closing. Now, approve me for my mm -hmm. loan. That's I right. mean, that is powerful. That is mm -hmm. such a gift to, to mm -hmm. the kryptonites out there yeah yeah awesome. yeah it's gonna be exciting so uh do something good with that money y'all do something good <laughs> yeah is, so uh let me see some so so is is yeah i hear you seth but i'm i'm thinking a little bit differently um but i hear you he says it sounds like set up the LLC and buy the house through the LLC and not have to pay the 15% fee. That's what, what yeah, you Yeah, use your LLC to move money around when, you're, when you understand how to do that. It's very simple. And then um, when you take title, don't put it in your name or if you put it in your name, record a mortgage with a lien holder, which can be your company or another company or a trust or something. Right. Right. <laughs> it's awesome. Okay, is there anybody else in the uh, in on the call? Who'd like to come off mute and ask any questions? Now's your opportunity. Hey, John. Yes. Hey, John. This is Adam. Uh, you helped me to set up an LLC uh, about a year ago or so. Mm -hmm. um, I just saw something recently about uh, the IRS talking about how they wanted to uh, get it to where any transactions for businesses uh, with you know, cash coming out of crypto at $10,000 or more, uh, that they wanted to have that reported. Now I have everything set up personally, uh, structured through my business. So nothing is actually in my name. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was just wondering like what additional measures might need to be put in place at that point, because, uh, so far as I understand that my business is a non-filing entity, so I wouldn't need to file anything. But that's correct. And the IRS is already reported. doing that. This is nothing new. The IRS is already doing that. You're only going to get it. Your the, the account holder or the contracting party is already going to get a 1099 for any amount of money that it sells when there's a disposition of assets. And that's why mm -hmm. I set these LLCs up this way because the 1099 does not create a tax liability. It does not create a filing obligation. The thing that creates a filing obligation is when the LLC files a return. Okay. So it doesn't matter like what they do on their end. So long as I'm not filing anything, it doesn't matter. Correct. I can show you dozens of 1099s I've received over for the last 20 years. And I just keep them in the folder for the, each company I'm using. And most of my companies don't file returns because they're all pass-throughs. I use them mm -hmm. just the way I have my clients using them. Mm -hmm. yeah. So okay. would you educate everybody on the... When you file, then you're ob then you're on the hook. Yeah, it's, when you file a return, the IRS has to reconcile what you reported uh, against what was reported on the filer. So the 1099 is then reconciled against the tax return, and those have to match, and everything's good. If the 1099 is sent in, and the and the report the the party against whom the 1099 is reported, like the taxpayer, your company. Mm -hmm. uh, does not file a return. The 1099 does not amount to anything. It doesn't create a reconciliation process. Wow. I don't know why. I don't know how else to explain it, but I've just discovered yep. that over 30 years of, you know, right. talking to IRS agents um, and everybody in that industry, 
to conclude that, and I kind of guessed in the 90s when I was doing it, and then I realized, well, heck, this is, this is where people don't realize the tax liability is not being created by a law. It's by being created by your accounting practice. Mm. That's why I can take a company that's being literally taken down by the IRS with a till take. A till take is when the IRS just levies everything that's coming in from your merchant account, and yep. you don't get anything. You can't pay your employees or keep the lights on. So I will come in there and in one phone call, I will have the client in a new bank account with a new company the next day or the next week sometimes. And I will reroute all the cash flow to the new company, make the client still the same owner relationship it was his old company that's being levied against. And then the IRS will be cut off. That till take stops. And then they know it. They can see everything I just did. And then they're so nice. And they come to the client and they say, hey, could you work with us on a payment plan? And we're like, well, I don't know. I don't have any money now, <laughs> you know? So, so it's, it's just right in their face. And I've never had a problem with that. So it's really, mu it's much easier to deal with somebody where I structure something and I'm going forward and he's going to get rich on something or he's going to deal with future cash flow. It's, so he, it's, it's hard for him to believe that I can do all those things. Yeah. When the guy that was on fire, I, I fixed his problem in one week and it looks even better six months later and it looks even better a year later. And now the guys call me saying, hey, I got all this money and the IRS still says I owe this and the, they, they don't know what to do about it, but they can't collect it from me. But the guy I set up who's going to get rich, he's like, well, okay, it sounds pretty cool. I'll take your word for it. And he doesn't, he's not going to understand it until like three years from now. Right. What, what we got. So yeah, don't, don't be intimidated by all this rhetoric on the internet they're already doing this it's like what you see on the movies uh when you wire three thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars there is no threshold on reporting you could be you could be putting 185 dollars in your bank account every week from a paycheck you're getting from this job this menial job you have yeah. and then maybe one time your uncle bob gives you a thousand bucks for christmas and you put that in your account and that's going to get reported to the financial crimes network and you won't even know it why Jesus. Yeah, because it was an irregular transaction, nope. not because it was over three thousand dollars. So wow. the, the system is not what you think it is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, is your uh, uh, other is it privacyfight.com? Privacy fight. Uh, there's privacyfightclub.com, I believe, and privacyfight.io. We're doing a bunch of changes right now, so you'd have to kind of ch uh, check. I haven't looked lately. Privacyfight.io. Um, privacyfightclub, and, and then privacyfight.io. And the uh, privacy fight flight fight club is that a dot com? It is a dot com, uh, and privacyfight.com, I believe he's got both. Yeah, it leads to privacyfight.io, and on that you're going to see the video membership, and which is it's cool. I mean, most of you guys are in there anyways, but I do put some content. I don't like to put too much technical information and good research stuff on the free side, um, but on the paid membership we have really good content there. Um, but if you go to um, the privacy fight channel on YouTube privacy fight being one word, you'll see a lot of uh, like the opening video we did here on this interview, uh, this evening, yeah. you'll see it up there. So I put some content up there, just like if a news item comes up, I get a bunch of calls and emails and not that I mind answering them, but it cues me up as to what's popular. So I'll do a little video on it too. Uh, so is it, uh, it's privacy fight. Uh, looks like there's a free consultation here. Right. Yeah, uh, that's where you can schedule a call. Okay, so that's so on YouTube you have like two point two one thousand subscribers, Probably. right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna. That's the right one. Let me just copy that and I'll drop that in the uh, show as well, so you guys can go to it. So sign up to John. Sign up to that, guys. And uh, so really you are, um, you're a guy who, when your, your hair's on fire and, and, you know, to go to, you're going to be able to say, take a deep breath. Let's take a look at your, 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 your statement of facts. And we're yeah. going to go ahead and uh, solve for this. And, you know, nobody's, nobody's going to jail in this story, at least right now. <laughs> right. Bring me the ugliest case. I could tell you the first two years I did this work professionally, the ugliest cases, and I got a lot of them, were people that were facing jail for um, contempt with the IRS because they didn't handle themselves correctly. And in some cases, I actually walked into the court and talked to the judge myself and got the person out of that situation. And no one's ever been punished or penalized or gone to jail or anything 
in any of those situations. And I've handled over well over 30,000 types of collections and cases and disputes and ugliness, crazy stuff. Everybody crazy. listen to that. Over 30,000 yeah. types. And of I case. couldn't do that by myself. I've had really good people working for me and that I trained them and they did the work. I did the core work and they helped, you know, facilitate all the communications. But right. yeah, it's been well over 30,000. But you're not years. an attorney. Nope, not. You're not an accountant. I'm not an attorney, not an accountant. I do not bill by the hour. I don't take an interest in what my client does. So if he gets rich, I don't get a piece of that. I don't want a piece of it. If he loses money, again, it's not my re responsibility. Um, I don't think anyone's lost money because of what I told him. So, but yeah, I have certain rules I follow. So on your, uh, uh, on your privacyfight.io that you have a, a paywall. So what, what is the investment, not the cost? What's the investment for people to get access? The investment is a couple hundred dollars. If you want just, uh, I priced it in three levels. There's basic, premium, and ultimate. The basic talks about debt collections and liabilities and getting out of it, putting out the fires. And uh, there's just a lot of content on that. Um, some of it's technical. Then the premium gets into a little bit more. Like for example, I might talk about equity stripping because I'm not gonna talk about equity stripping when I'm gonna put out the fire. I put out the fire, I get you out of the hot water, whatever the problem is. And then we talk about equity stripping and reorganizing what you're doing. And then when we get into the ultimate level, we're, this is more of your uh, crypto investor type group, your niche okay. market. So it depends on, you know, um, but yeah, I wanna really develop that out. In fact, um, on the ultimate level, which I believe is $600. I mean, the way I look at it is like this, it's free <laughs> because to you guys, six hundred dollars, you know, is nothing when you're done with the investment. But right. um, I want to, I want to bring in some people that um, can talk about um, what I would call mergers and acquisitions that can do placement of uh, millions of dollars of capital into private equity, uh, because this is not my expertise. But I can bring in people and we can talk about some plans and connect you in and this sort of thing. So I know a lot of people are going to have some money to to put up somewhere. So. Well, at least last yeah. week. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I think a lot of you guys out there are uh, cool cucumbers. I'm sure you saw this coming, okay? And you're not newbies, even if you are newbies. I think you're a little bit sophisticated from people I've talked to. I think most of you guys are somewhat sophisticated and you saw this coming and you still have, you have that dry powder because you took your profits or some of them and you're, you're getting in there and saying, yeah, great. Thank you very much. $39,000 Bitcoin. <laughs> you're, 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 you're talking to me six, six months from now, by the okay. way, you, you just, right. you just started talking to me in the future. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> today, today, no, I'm still John Holmes. Okay. Some herb. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I, I was not the smart one with the dry powder. I was fully <laughs> deployed, but you know, okay. look, we learn and, and, and I haven't lost yeah. any money. It's because I haven't sold. Exactly. And all this, all the machinations and all the drama that you're experiencing right now, newbie or not, in three years, when you tell people the money you made, if you want to, which yeah. I don't recommend, but if you have a vague discussion with someone about it, you will just look like a genius. No matter what you look like right now, you right. look like a genius and you yeah. don't have to be. So. Yeah. Well, I just keep going back to, I remember like, I'm a big fan of the, the dollar vigilante and the crypto vigilante, uh, Jeff Berwick and Raphael Levarde, Levarde. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, they were talking about Bitcoin in their newsletters getting in when it was like, I think two or 10 bucks, something like that. Uh -huh. Right. You know, and, and so you, you start thinking about that and, I look at them like geniuses, right? right. Absolute yeah, yeah. geniuses. Right? right. And so we're sitting here, we just <laughs> got, you know, sucker punched, but even at, let's say you bought it at, at $57,000 mm -hmm. last week or 50, 55,000 last week, 10 days ago, whatever it was before, you know, thank you. Elon came out with that stupid tweet. Um, that, that started the cascading to, to take out all the leveraged, you know, investors. Um, but, but when you, when you take a look at that at 55,000, there will be a day when Bitcoin's at 300,000, I think. Yeah. I think I, so. It's going to be soon too. Yeah. And, and, <clears throat> and so we will get through this everybody because we're not going to sell, you know, and uh, th this just goes in a war story. We all have our collection of war stories now, and we can say we were part of that. I mean, honestly, this last week was the worst crash in history of any asset class 
of any year, any decade, any century. This last 10 days was the worst asset crash ever. And I don't think anybody that's on this Zoom call is going up and jumping off a building. You know, no way, man. We're just holding because we know we're going to be we're, we're going to be needing John's services here in, in the near future. I'm going to use you, man. I love this uh, escrow. I want to actually, I can't wait till next Friday. So we'll set it up. We'll set it up. It's going to be a blast. Yep. Um, so everybody mark your calendars next Friday night, 7 PM. Um, I think uh, if, the, is there anybody else in the, uh, in, in, in the zoom chat that wants to go off mute and ask a question? If not, if not, we're going to call it a night. It's 8.50. John, you've invested two hours with us, and I thank you, as you're always. Fun. Thank you. You are. You are. You, you're just awesome. I love you, man. So, okay. Thank you, everybody. Um, really appreciate meeting all of you new, new people. Uh, I didn't know that, that it was going to be a group date tonight, but I'm really glad it was. So, uh uh, you guys already know John really well and are as fond of him as I am. So those of you in the chat who don't know John, uh, all of the links are in there. And uh, I'm telling you, he's just magic. He, he solves problems. So, all right, everyone. John, thank you. Appreciate you. My pleasure. Good night.